My name's Kimberly, and this is Off Road Reactions. Today I'm reacting to Chaos in the Desert, Simpson Desert Part 2. And this video comes to us from Ronnie Dahl, a name I'm familiar with, but I have to confess I've never watched this channel. In fact, I don't watch a lot of these because I find them a little bit distressing. And I'm not making any derogatory comment about Ronnie Dahl or anybody else. It just, it doesn't appeal to me. So uh, this will be interesting because of that. So here we go. Let's take a look. We need to cross, and it's the only way out. Which the bus? I'm about to roll over. I'm underwater, man. Okay. Okay. Well. Um. Why? Oh, I'm interested to get to that part of the video. Okay, this looks like um, right about Madigan Camp 15 or 16 on the High River Track. Just by the lay of the land. Having been there umpteen times myself. Just the way the track winds through here and the, and the way the sand dunes are. Okay, let's have a look. Well set up vehicles, I will say that. Really well Whoa. set up. Whoa! This is going to make for an interesting day. Oh. I'm actually a bit worried about those clay pans, eh? Yeah. Got towing, towing a trailer, of course. Glad you're going first. <laughs> um. Well, first thing is look how well that four driver set up. Very impressive. Out of my budget. <laughs> Leaf sprung, but it's got helper springs everywhere. Beautiful setup in the back there. Yeah. What you can do when you've got money. We might actually have to send. I don't know. We'll see how we go. From what I remember last time, they're going to be quite sloppy. I don't think it's it's a place you could really do a recovery. It's got to be done in one hit. Yeah, full send. Oh, that's interesting. Gee, I hope I see that. Uh, judging by the video that was at the start, we will see that. It's not a place you can do a recovery. It's somewhere you've got to do it in one hit. I totally disagree with that sentiment. Totally disagree with that sentiment. We're talking about a clay pan, and the clay pans in the Simpson Desert, I tell you right now, if it's as wet as it is here, you should not drive across them. I've said this a million times, in the sand dune country, drive around the water on the clay pans. Yes, it's a long way, 75 kilometers sometimes. But you know what? You get bogged, you will spend days there if you ever get out. So drive around. There is no such thing as there's no recovery, therefore it's got to be done in one go. If there's no recovery, the answer is don't do it. <laughs> anyway, I'm jumping ahead. I'm just making assumptions from what they're saying and from the little piece of video I saw at the start, which was clearly going across the clay pan at supersonic speed. Hmm. This really looks like the Hay River. This just in, it's bucketing down with rain. We gotta get going and hit these dunes again. I'm actually a little bit worried. I don't know what year this is. I should check, I will check a bit later, but um, Misty and I were in the Hay Oh, I can't remember if Missy was there on both trips, but 2010, 2011, I can't remember which year it was. I think 2011, we had 125 mils of rain. Yes, and Misty was there. Um, 
it, it's really tough uh, going and you really ought to just park up for a few days. Are we still in the desert? This is an insane difference compared to yesterday. Actually, that was probably a hike here, honestly. Just generally speaking, I've never seen this much amount of water around after rain, yet alone in the desert. Yeah, okay. On the Hay River around uh, Madigan Camp 15, I have seen it worse than this. And um, the general rule of thumb is in a lot of areas, you shouldn't drive on the track because it's in the clay pans. So what you do, well, what we did in 2011 was we went off the track over on the edge of the sand dunes and drove along the, the dry soil. You can probably see in some of this imagery, there's dry soil up on the on the, on the higher ground. In some places it's not possible to do. There's just too much shrub and, you know, acacia and stuff like that. But anyway, they, they look to be traveling okay and not sinking in. So that's a good start. I guess our most concerning part is where has all this water pulled? seems to be between the dunes. The sand on the dunes, on the other hand, very firm. <laughs> well, the, the water's not going to be on the dunes. <laughs> okay. Very easy to drive on now. It's the bits in between that we are really worried about. And it seems every dune we climb, there's another surprise just on the other side. Yeah, now here's a perfect example, right, of what I was talking about. There's absolutely no need to drive across here because you can drive on the edges over here. You can drive up halfway up on the dune. You just want to, you know, just going to be driving over spinifex and stuff. But that's fine. We do it all the time. Uh, you will get seriously bogged in some of these clay pants. It's just not worth it. You can't see the track for one thing. And if you leave the track even by a foot, you'll sink. Mate. Like we didn't camp where um, Madigan camped, eh? Oh, well, there you go. It's <laughs> the Hay River track. Far out. <laughs> it's like a swimming pool. This is incredible. <clears throat> this really is incredible. Excuse me. So this is one of those places where you really can't uh, leave the track. The track is the safest place to drive. But to be honest with you, if it's this wet, park up for three, four days if, if that's an option for you. It's often not an option for some people like take along tour operators like myself. Um, we, 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 we allow time to do it, but it often creates a lot of itinerary issues. So uh, I understand that it's not always possible. And these guys, if they do need to uh, stick to an itinerary, then they're certainly, in my opinion, driving in the right place right at the moment. You know, if you leave this track here and on this really flat country <clears throat> and try to get, uh, you know, to dry ground, uh, it's a bit hard. This looks to me like some of the area around about... Um, uh, sort of south of Madigan Camp 16, south of Madigan Camp, uh, yeah, somewhere somewhere around about Camp 16 or 15, maybe a little south, maybe a little north. Um, it's definitely the High River track. Anyway, not much you can do except park up. That's really the best option. Holy crap, man! This whole track is basically a river. <laughs> So, is this why they call it Hay River Trek? Man, it doesn't stop! So we've gone from super fine talcum powder dust to sloppy mud. Oh my god, and it continues. It's deeper here too. <laughs> you should see the mud licking off the trailer. Oh man, I just checked the time, it's quarter past four. Oh, you're kidding. We just... That's a late lunch. Very late lunch, and we've got a long way to go. 
Oh man, that's a long way. That's a long way, man. Uh, here's another issue, right? Um, and don't get me wrong here. Uh, the reason I look at these videos and comment on them is not to be critical of these people. I don't know their circumstances, so I, I, I'm, I'm not being critical of the people. I'm trying to give advice based on my decades of experience of traveling these tracks. We were one of the first people to travel the High River Track, for instance. Um, and you really need to be in camp uh, about this time of day. And the other thing is, don't be don't be working to a schedule like. You know, if you're going to travel late into the day, uh, don't be doing that too much. Uh, you should have planned your trip to allow for the worst case scenario. So for me, what that means is every seven days of travel, there's a spare day, which my clients don't even know about. Only I know about it. Uh, so what I do is I <clears throat> slow down the travel or whatever, if the going's good. But if the going's tough, I get a whole day spare for every seven days that I've traveled. Oh, we better uh, push where we can push, eh? I really want to get to that Salt Lake by tomorrow, at least by tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise, we're not going to have a chance. We're going to cross the sketchy Salt Lake. I only really want to do it to get to Birdsville, not to get to a marker and then have to go back the other way again <clears throat> and see this is the issue what you really should be saying to yourself is uh, i'll get to birdsville when i get to birdsville i want to cross the salt lake or the clay pan when it's dry so how about i camp for four days by the time i get there it'll be dry uh if your itinerary doesn't allow you to do that then drive around the clay pan all of the clay pans can be driven around in six of desert all of them. Oh, that's for sure. We'll get stuck in the middle of it. We just got off the mat again. The salt lake that's coming up in a day's time. We don't know if we can cross it. We've only got one way out. Not enough fuel to go back the other way. Let's see what happens. That's why you stay where you are. Uh, yeah, you know, don't try and cross the clay. Cro excuse me. Don't try and cross the clay pit. Just don't do it. Drive around it. So I just got back in the car, off the phone. The phone dropped out. Just spoke to family in Perth and they had a look online for the weather. We obviously got no internet connection or anything out here. It's not looking good. It's, we're in a desert and it's gonna rain until 2 a.m. and it's not just a little bit of rain. This is, this is serious business here. Hay River Track is underwater. We still gotta see if we can get through it and we're a day away from a salt lake that we have to cross on the QAA line to get to Birdsville, which is our exit. We don't have enough fuel to go back the other way. Nowhere near enough. All right, I so, just making this, so, they're just dramatic, making this dramatic for the video. Fair enough, you know, these guys, these people who do these videos in a commercial way and uh, have great YouTube following, huge number of subscribers and lots and lots and lots of sponsors, as you can tell by the, all the stickers everywhere. And also the very expensive and beautifully set up vehicles. Let's make it dramatic, right? And this is one of my issues with these sponsored YouTube channels that I that I have. It doesn't teach you how to drive in the desert. What it does is it creates clickbait. It creates stuff you want to watch because it's exciting to watch. The thing is, it teaches people bad habits, bad uh, processes. If it's going to rain, even more than it already has, then you're just going to have to park up uh, and camp. If fuel is your problem, don't drive. You know, uh, your fuel 
usage will be higher if you get bogged for long periods of time. Your fuel usage while you're camped doing nothing is zero. So this is all artificial stuff. And, and, I, and I understand it, it's made to sell products, right? These videos are made to sell stuff. They're made to get subscribers. They're made to make money. But the problem is they actually teach people the wrong way to do this stuff. Park up, stay for four days, camp in the rain, have a good time, use up all your alcohol supplies, get in the birds in the dry, or... The other alternative is, you know, that they're hiking up this clay pan, which is uh, east of Lake uh, Pebble. Um, it's the very first clay pan. Uh, it's right on the border of Queensland and Northern Territory. And you do come down it from the Hay River Track from kind of north to south. And then you've got to cross it to get across to uh, the more the drier part of the Kudo Lake. Now, here's a thing. I've been on the QAA when it's been extremely wet. And once you get to Air Creek, you'll have to cross Air Creek. Uh, if Air Creek is up, it, it, and Air Creek generally isn't up due to local rain, it's up due to you know, tropical rain in, in the northern part of Australia. So Air Creek probably won't be flooded, but every swale, every interdunal space will be flooded like they're talking about. So the, this clay pan is not their only problem. Every single clay pan, every swale between Air Creek and Big Red will be full of water and it will require you to drive around every single one. And I've been there, I've done that. I've driven 75 kilometers around, you know, Air Creek bypass. I've driven every single swale around the water, around the water, around the water, whatever it took. Uh, and the thing is, that takes fuel. So if you don't have enough fuel, don't drive when it's wet because you'll have to drive around all of the water greater distance than you planned on using more fuel than you plan to use. If you park up for four days and it's just local rain, it's likely that you won't have to detour so much. We have to, that's the only way out, unless we sort something else out. So, um, we won't know until we get there. It's, anxiety is rising. Conditions right now are pretty sloppy and wet. So, mm, not looking forward to cleaning the car, that's for sure. The beginning of the day has been quite exciting with all this rain around and all this splashing and sploshing. It's awesome fun, but the rain just keeps coming. It is relentless today. And there is nowhere to stop, there's nowhere to camp. Everything in the desert makes sense until it starts raining. Until it starts raining. Yeah, that's not true. There are plenty of places to camp. If you have a look up here, just over the top of the bottom of this vehicle here, there's a nice kind of stony little bit of land. There are lots of places to camp when it's wet like this. Uh, especially if you've got a camper trailer, right? It's, it's easy to, to say there's nowhere to camp. The, the reality is you, do, you really haven't looked. Raining. So we got no choice but to keep pushing and keep splashing until we get I mean, look at the it's higher ground. And yes, you guessed it. In darkness, we find camp yet again. But Don't drive in darkness. Don't drive in the dark. That rain is not letting off, so it's going to be a wet camp. This is what I call get their itis. Get their itis will bring you unstuck every time. 
You're not there to get somewhere else. You're there to experience the there. Good morning, folks. Classic bacon and eggs this morning. What a night we have. See, now, here you go. There's nowhere to camp, but we camped. So well, here's what you do. Stay there. Four days. Everything will be dry. <clears throat> Remember that the horror story that we heard just a little while ago? The rain is coming. It's going to be terrible. We need to keep moving because it's going to rain and rain and rain and rain. Have a look at the sky. Have a look at the ground. This is what I mean about these channels, right? This this is this is made to be exciting. It's made to be interesting, but it doesn't teach you how to drive in the desert. It doesn't teach you how to plan your desert travel. Okay, these guys are here to kind of make exciting content, and I get that. That's perfectly fine. I'm not criticizing them for it. What I'm saying is, don't watch this stuff to understand how to travel in the desert. You can watch this stuff to learn about all the flashy gear. You can watch this stuff to spend a whole lot of money. You can watch this stuff to know about the places, but you shouldn't watch this stuff to understand that this is how you travel. We had. Um, the storm seems to have buggered off now, off to the distance. You can still see it. And we're gonna have blue skies, and I've never seen this much rain out in the desert before, uh, let alone the Simpson Desert. So, time will tell. I have, and the trick is to park up for four days. And there's Torbs in classic fashion, just in time for the brekkie wrap. Jim, I'm gonna just jump ahead here because uh, this is boring me a little bit. I'm gonna to go to where they go across the clay pan. there okay so here we go this is the clay pan that has what's called the k1 track running along the edge of it here that you can see the base of that sand dune and they have come from the north just trying to work out the direction see that looks all wrong to be honest with you so this guy here is parked as though he's come from the south I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but, oh, they've been to Pebble Corner. Right. So they've gone over to Pebble Corner and they've come up the K1. So they've already been down this side of the dune, I would suggest. Either gone over this track that you can see over the sand dune and gone to Pebble Corner uh, and come back along the clay pan, I would suggest, along the K1. And now they're going to cross this clay pan to get to the other side, just like the chicken did across the road. Now, those of you who know this clay pan will know that they've already driven, I can't remember the distance, let's just say it's 30 kilometers from <clears throat> the little truck that runs out of Pebble Corner to the base of this uh, dune. They've driven 30 kilometers north up this clay pan. <clears throat> they've also driven a couple of kilometers south when they first arrived from the Hay River track. Now, what they could have done is not gone to Pebble Corner, <clears throat> excuse me, or they could have uh, continued north again back to where they entered this clay pan. It's only a few kilometers. And right at that point, it's actually possible to traverse around the northern side of this clay pan, come down the eastern side of the clay pan, back onto the QAA without touching any mud at all. So this is all total BS in my opinion. 
There is no way in the world that anybody in their right mind with any true experience of traveling in the Simpson Desert would attempt to drive through what you're just looking at here, except for this. Let's make some exciting content on YouTube so we can make some money and sell some stuff. Oh my God, it's actually a river. What the hell has he got me into? Thanks for watching.